Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. We're continuing the mini series When Should I Use Dot Dot Dot. We're going to do raw therapy tonight. It's going to be great. Don't miss it. <laughs> Okay, once again, my name is Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If you're new to this channel, I do a lot of work here to build a learning community of the open source art technologies, or at least dominantly the open source technologies that are out there. I do touch on commercial products every now and then and pit them against other tools to see how well they perform against open source versus commercial and there's some interesting stuff that's going on don't hesitate to go and watch those and get some bearings on what goes on in this channel and community tonight i want to focus in on raw therapy which i have touched on before but more in the sense of how does it stack up against other tools this series is about picking out singular tools and finding how they can be best used what are the best use cases for that tool and tonight it is raw therapy so it is up in front of me it is version 5.6 which i don't think is the latest version but it's fairly recent um i will put a download to the latest version in the description below so go check that out this tool really its greatest strength is its simplicity and we'll dig around through that and i'll show you how that works just so you can get a sense of it but it I first encountered raw therapy as a raw image loader, uh, particularly for GIMP. Uh, it's very versatile for its raw image importing. It works with Nikon, it works with Canon, it covers the CR3 format, which I know is kind of a hot thing right now. I like to work uh, with the NEFs, which is an icon. I'm an icon guy, so that's what I do, and that's what I have up in front of me, but it does support a wide range of formats out there, which I do believe is out there in the documentation on, the, uh, on their website if you're curious to go check that out. So again, greatest strength I see is in the simplicity of the design. It has a lot of features that you would find in other raw image and in this case, tonal image enhancement tools, which is really how this functions by itself. Um, it has history so that you can keep track of what you've done and also kind of roll back through what you've applied and unapply, if that's the word. It has the ability for snapshots, which is um, kind of hidden behind my camera there, but it's there. And what that does is allows you to take a, a, a moment in time and save it. And then if you apply a whole bunch of stuff that really doesn't work out, you don't like the direction it's going, you can roll all the way back to that fixed point in time. And you can take many snapshots along the way and roll back to any one of those and, and keep working from that point. But it's kind of a nice idea that you have both those controls where I could either dig through my history or pick specific points if I know it's going to be kind of a risky change or if I've come to a point where I could be happy but I'm not sure, it's a great idea. And again, that, that's not native to this tool, but it's there, it's supported. Other popular things, and this is keeping in line with the vernacular you'll find in tonal controls and enhancement controls like this, are things like the demosaicing and the chromatic aberration correction. If you're unfamiliar with those, uh, there are some tool tips that hop in as you try to hover over these things and uh, figure out what they do, which is very helpful. But to give a nutshell of what these things are, demosaicing will help you repair color sampling if it was taken under not ideal conditions perhaps lighting wasn't great you can repair the color uh, colorization using demosaicing uh, to repair that that sense of color and that sense of depth uh, that's what that's for the chromatic aberration is almost like color fog uh, which can happen under certain um, again extreme lighting conditions or when it uh, refracts off of things so those things are pretty common they're there they're both uh, very intuitive to set up and use and apply to the images and um, again built in uh, as a standard thing what makes this just a little bit unique is that I did find things in here which I haven't seen other places like the uh, distortion correction which is very interesting in that you could fix the wide angle fisheye effect uh, where if it's really extreme kind of like this you can use this to roll that back and actually repair the image. You could straighten it out. And that's really kind of cool where if you're trying to get really wide from a really uncomfortable vantage point where there's only one way to get it, but you have to kind of spread wide from that, that low or high place where it's hard to kind of capture wide and keep it with the right aspect ratio, fisheye will kind of wrap around things and you can use this to straighten them out again. So it's a really interesting idea. So 
this is cool and again that's not the singular use case for this i'm going to get there i believe the greatest strength as i've mentioned is its simplistic interface um, comparing this against other ones i just feel like the layout of this makes great sense it is very easy to ingest to understand as i see it what it does the image import process is very well built so you can see the image as you're trying to figure out what you want to import not all of them work that way um, these areas that you can dig through this is not all that uncommon but the layout here i think makes good sense in that they've made these these little mini sections and there's nothing really hidden in that you don't have to dig through a list of modules you don't have to go enable them or unhide them uh, because some tools have such a long list of things um, that it's very difficult to kind of get to the specific thing you want. This is very, very well laid out, very, very simplistic, very, very refined in how you do things. It has, again, a common approach to turning things on and off. Uh, it does not have masking, unfortunately, but hopefully it'll get there someday. That aside, I don't want to paint the picture that this is a product of lesser quality. This is a really amazing tool that has a lot of power and color control and really the best use for it, I would say. I mean, we, we're talking about interface. That's kind of its best strength, but the best use of it would be for people who are stepping into kind of their first paces. They're starting to stick their toes in the water for working with tones or working with color correction, working with image enhancement great place to begin and again that's not to say this is a a tool of lesser caliber it's just very very well designed there are some things like i mentioned the masking and things like that that are not built into this however it's a great place to start learning and figuring these things out and then maybe scale out to where some of those other features are if you're interested in those type of things but it's a fantastically powerful tool it is free it is open source and it does have regular updates and a community behind it so it's definitely worth checking out absolutely nothing to lose by downloading it and and digging into it and seeing what you get from it so raw therapy i will put a link download link in the description below and there it is have at it I'm so glad you joined in and stuck with me this far and hopefully got a good sense of how this tool functions and where it goes and what it can do and what it can do for you. I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. I would really appreciate if you consider giving this a thumbs up and subscribing and joining the community. Don't hesitate to leave a comment and become involved in this community. I love it when people leave some feedback to let me know their experience for this and how they can help others. And especially when I see other members in the community, community connecting with each other through this channel. That's just very special to me because that's my goal in all of this is to connect us all to the tools and the experience that we need uh, to explore our art forms. So. Thank you so much. I'll see you at the next video.